As we head into the week of November 18th, our weather becomes very volatile as two major storm systems take over the entire U.S. and it is going to be countrywide impacts for the entire week. We can take a look at our map right here and what you're seeing is uh, at, at the start of the week, this is Monday, uh, two separate storm systems here that will eventually phase. We have this wave of energy going across the Pacific Northwest. It's brought a lot of rain and snow to that area uh, over this weekend. Um, and as we head into the week, we're going to first see this lobe of energy here in the south bring severe weather to the south central U.S. But what's going to happen is those two systems are going to merge together in the north central U.S. And here we are in the middle of the week. That's when the worst of the weather is going to migrate a little bit farther north. And then as we get later into the week, you're going to see that same system drift to the north and east. And Thursday, Friday, that's when we have the most impactful weather in that part of the country. And you're seeing those darker blue colors because the system becomes very deep, very strong. And it's going to be cold aloft, which means there could be some snow in some of those areas too. But we're not done. And in fact, the Pacific Northwest is going to see the last round of uh, bad weather this weekend. You're seeing this system right off the coastline begin to move into the region. And that is what's going to be the weather maker as we head into the weekend out there. And it's really going to be a persistent pattern of inclement weather as these two storm systems sweep across the country. And a little sneak peek at next week too. Uh, it does seem like this guy is going to eventually move eastwards and it could keep our weather active as well. But I'm going to take you to our surface map here. We're going to take a look at the American model. We'll, we'll see what is going to play out closer to the ground. And first things first, this is our severe weather setup out here in the south central U.S. This looks like we may have a squall line, which is uh, likely going to bring some damaging wind, even low chance for tornadoes out there. So that's your Monday. We head into Tuesday, Wednesday. You see that system migrate farther north. Uh, could be even some snow in the north central U.S. And then late in the week, um, it's going to do something a little funky here. I'm not really buying the American model fully, but it gives you an idea of what's going to happen. Uh, that upper level component is going to really deepen. It's going to strengthen. We're going to see a secondary level low spawn right there and that secondary low is going to be uh, responsible for what may be some heavy rain finally in the northeast could even be some snow in the mountains out there uh, i'm not buying as much snow as the american model showing us but that gives you an idea then if we look off over the weekend back to the pacific northwest there's our next system coming ashore there it is right there uh, you'll see a lot of heavy rain especially out here in the mountains in california and oregon uh, could be some significant flooding out there if this does play out the way it appears right now. It uh, could be some decent snow in the northern Rockies as well. So that's uh, that's one look at our weather this week. I'm going to show you the European model, which gives us another look. And it's going to be similar, especially early on when there's more certainty in the forecast. Um, so there's a look at that severe weather setup in the south. You can see, once again, we have this really narrow line of yellow colors. That's your squall line. That's what's going to produce the severe weather out there. Dominantly a wind threat. Low tornado threat too, and we'll take another look at that here in just a moment. But as we move into the middle of the week, there's your system migrating north. Could be some light snow out there. Could be some heavy rain in the south too, by the way. And, and you know, even Louisiana and Florida could get some severe weather on Tuesday as this system moves east. Get a little bit of a break in the upper level uh, system. It, it really helps to generate um, a secondary low out here. So heavy rain appearing more likely in the northeast, and the rain is needed out there as well. You'll see this. Uh, Thursday, Friday, and it's going to hang around there for a little bit too, thanks to that upper level component. This looks more realistic in terms of snow, by the way. You're seeing some of that blue color show up. You know, I, I do think it may be a little bit overdone here, but those higher elevations, uh, you know, Berkshires into the Poconos, uh, northern New England mountains, even the Appalachian mountains could see some snow. It does not seem unlikely at all, actually, at this point. Then we have the Pacific Northwest. We have a huge plume of moisture, especially out here in Oregon and California. This is the upcoming weekend, and uh, that's going to sit there for a little bit. Could cause some flooding. So that's, again, another look. That's your European model. Could be some persistent snow in the, uh, the mountains out there as well. Um, but I want to mention uh, our, our severe weather setup, of course. I'm going to bring you to the Storm Prediction Center outlook. This is actually for Sunday when I'm recording this video, but what I'm going to show you is uh, the outlook as we head into uh, your Monday, which is what we're focused on here. Um, there is your threat, your slight risk across Texas and Oklahoma. That is where the squall line is going to be closest to the low. There's going to be more forcing. It's going to help to drive that strong wind and the lower levels down to the surface. Uh, we also have a marginal risk which extends into Missouri and as far uh, to the east as um, Mississippi out there. I'll show you our categories. The tornado threat is going to be greatest, again, closest to the low. You're going to have a little bit extra spin in the atmosphere, more or less. Your wind threat, pretty broad, but again, it's clearly going to be strongest as it moves through places like Oklahoma City, uh, into the Dallas area, even uh, down to closer to Waco as well. Our hail threat, not as significant. You don't usually get a uh, as significant hail threat with these systems, um, but hey, there could be some in there. I'm not really, I'm not as concerned about the hail. But even our, our day three outlook, I'll show you this. As mentioned before, could be some severe weather that 
follows us onto the Gulf Coast here on Tuesday. So that's a look at what we're seeing there. Now back to our uh, map here on um, Pivotal Weather. We're looking at some of the uh, the, the uh, surface conditions. I wanted to take you to, though, the low-level winds because this is really what's going to be driving the severe weather threat given we're talking about a squall line. This is Monday morning. Anywhere you're seeing those yellow colors, that's where you have really strong wind, just a few thousand feet up. Squall lines are really good at dr dragging that really strong wind down to the surface, and that's why you have damaging wind threats here. So follow that yellow color. This is Monday morning. Now we're Monday afternoon, Monday evening. You can see it kind of fades out as it moves to the north and uh, east and that's why that threat diminishes after it moves out of Oklahoma and Texas but I'm going to move this into Tuesday and you're going to see we still have this component down here uh, this conveyor belt and that's going to help to keep that severe threat going on Tuesday as we talked about before um, now in terms of other weather we, we also saw how much rain may fall in some places in the country so we're going to take a look at our, our total precipitation here uh, we're going to take a look at basically a five-day precip um, and actually you know what we're going to go to uh, total precip. We're going to start here on Monday. Um, so this is rain basically from the weekend into uh, Monday morning. So it kind of gives you an idea of who's already seeing heavy rain and who may be dealing with flooding. And as we head through Monday and Tuesday, you can see that's a pretty good swath of rain that falls across a good chunk of the central U.S. Could definitely be some flooding out there. And anywhere you're seeing the purple colors, we're talking about one to two inches of rain. So very wet out there. Uh, definitely a flooding threat out here in the southeast as well, where you could have upwards of uh, two to four inches of rain with some of that um, storm activity, some of the convection. As we move later into the week here, you're going to see that rain uh, really begin to overtake the northeast as well. Now, this is significant because there are areas out there, uh, including Boston, for example, which is dealing with its driest season ever, not just fall, the driest season ever. Um, this could uh, tip the scales back in the direction they should be. Um, we're talking about what may be a extremely uh, relieving um, one inch of rain or more possibly. Uh, we'll have to see if that system can really develop, but things are trending in the direction of a rainier uh, system out there, and that would be very beneficial. Meanwhile, if we uh, take a look to the Pacific Northwest, you'll notice that we already have some decent rain from the start of the period. I'm looking right out here, mainly in the mountains, um, but as we go through the week, especially here, once we get to Wednesday, Thursday, uh, particularly, that's when that system hits the coastline out there, and you're going to see into the weekend a significant amount of precip being forecasted here. This is our European model, but regardless, uh, even if it is overdone, we're talking about what may be um, four plus inches of rain in some of the mountains, which will cause flooding. And in fact, we can go to our uh, national blend of models too, which is a really good job at capturing precip. This is through the entire period, more or less. Um, and uh, really what you're getting at here is uh, that, that look of you know, up to a foot of rain in some of those mountains. When you're getting a good signal from this uh, model, it really says a lot about the uh, power of the system. So definitely late in the week and in the weekend, Pacific Northwest could be dealing with some flooding. This is a really strong signal in the Northeast. Look at that, a widespread inch of rain, very possible. And across the central U.S., a widespread inch of rain, very possible as well. So that tells us a lot about what's going on. And I wanted to show you too that, that drought monitor I'd mentioned um, there it is. Uh, anywhere you're seeing yellow colors, that's pre-drought conditions where you're seeing the uh, tan and orange colors. You're seeing a lot of that here in the northeast. You're seeing uh, a good chunk of that here in the north central U.S. So this rain that falls um, would be very beneficial. But I do want to mention it does seem like there may be a sharp cutoff here from uh, portions of the um, northern plains so i'm not certain that this part of the country is really going to get much relief but out here for certain uh, out here we have a very good chance for some relief too and that's what we really need to see now i'll mention too that uh we have more than just the potential for rain i'll show you the potential for snow here as well because um it is going to be pretty cold uh, across the country too um as these systems come in now, you're going to see a lot of snow pile up in the mountains, a lot of snow. Uh, so we'll get to that in a moment. But what you're going to also want to keep an eye on is out here uh, where we're going to see snowfall because we're going to see it in some of the lower elevations, uh, not quite outside of the hills, but some of those hills that haven't seen snow yet have a good chance to see it this week. Uh, so here we go. It's the middle of the week. By the way, there's your snow forecast out here for the uh, north central U.S. We'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. Um, but even the northeast there, you can see in the Appalachian Mountains, the mountains in northern New England. This is a very realistic forecast um, from what I'm, you know, what I've been seeing. And uh, I really like the idea that, that we could see snow anywhere in even just the higher hills in the northeast. But let's take a look. Let's break this down a little closer by region. Um, I'm going to start with the north central U.S. where there could be a decent uh, snowfall. And if we move this through the week, 
Uh, that's what we're looking at roughly for totals. Again, a lot of this is going to fall on your Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, not a massive storm, but the first real snowfall of the year for many of these areas, uh, even into the um, Minneapolis metro area. Could be some snow, could be up to an inch, uh, but it's really more North Dakota, uh, the northwestern portion of Minnesota. Um, that, to me, based on everything I've seen, we're looking at a good three to six incher. Could be some isolated higher totals, depending on how um, those systems phase together. Uh, so there is some upside to that, but looks like there will be at least some snow. If we move this uh, to the northeast, where you're going to see, again, snowfall comes in in some of those higher terrain. Uh, you can see basically where the mountains are just based off the snowfall map here. Um, so you have your white mountains out here. You get your green mountains here. Uh, you have the Adirondacks and Catskills, um, basically any of the higher terrain. And, of course, your Appalachian Mountains down here, which will continue through West Virginia, even into uh, Virginia and perhaps northern North Carolina, that could be some uh, accumulating snow out there in the mountains. Um, but we're not talking about any significant amounts. Where you're seeing those pink colors show up, that's where the highest peaks could see up to six inches. But generally, those dark blues, that's indicating a good two to four inches. Um, and the higher up you are, the most, more snow you'll see. Otherwise, uh, could be some snowflakes in some of the um, lower areas. You know, Pittsburgh, sure, could be some snowflakes out there, uh, but I wouldn't really expect much to accumulate. Where you're seeing those gray colors, that's where there may be some snow, but I don't really expect much sticking out there, at least not as it appears right now. There is some uncertainty. But also, I want to take you to the northwest where we have those, uh, we have that one big event coming. And if we bring you through the week here, we're talking about mountains that are going to see, I mean, gosh, upwards of, you can see that on the screen if you look closely, upwards of uh, five feet of snow in those mountains right on the coastline there. I mean, we're talking about a massive snowfall for those areas, really replenishing uh, the summits and even through the rest of the Rockies. Anywhere you're seeing those orange colors, that's where we're talking about a good two-foot snowfall. So a lot of snow is going to fall in the mountains. Uh, great for ski season out there and, um, you know, really a, a Clearly a big storm system that's going to dump a lot of precip out. But this is a really significant amount. Those mountains in Oregon, in Oregon excuse me, looking at uh, you know as much as five feet or more snow um, could easily, easily, easily be more than five feet out there. That says a lot. Uh, I also want to take you, though, to our, our uh, wind because as we take a look at some of the wind in the north central U.S., we, I believe we're going to actually see some uh, at least wind advisories, perhaps even high wind warnings. Um, and we're going to go take a look again at our European model. I'm going to take you to wind gusts here, and we're going to open this back up to the national level. Um, here's your wind. Uh, first of all, this is Monday. Um, you're seeing some strong wind gusts down here. That system is going to be a very strong one, that low, that's going to bring severe weather. So Texas, Oklahoma, you can have non-thunderstorm wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour. That really becomes windy, though, across the country on Tuesday. Anywhere you're seeing those red colors, that indicates winds, wind gusts that may be up to 50 miles per hour. We're not talking about thunderstorms out here. We really just have strong wind at the surface. Uh, could easily be gusts up to 60 miles per hour, which would be you know severe level. Um, and it is going to be a very, very windy uh, middle of the week out there. That wind shifts to the northeast with our system. But uh, wherever you are in the U.S., it's, just, it's going to be breezy. So be prepared for that. Uh, this is your Thursday, Friday. And even these areas that aren't seeing really much in the way of uh, rain and storms may be seeing wind gusts as high as 40 miles per hour. So that sort of gives you an idea of what we're looking at. And of course, in the Northwest, we're going to have a lot of wind out here as well um, as we get to the weekend and as that storm system uh, basically comes into the U.S. So going to be an active week in that sense too. And we're going to wrap this up with temperatures. Uh, I want to show you what we're expecting in terms of uh, temps relative to our average. So, you know, so far this season, We've had a lot of mild weather. Uh, it's been a big reason we've seen the drought extend a lot. Uh, Monday, we're starting off with this really, really warm weather for this time of year out here in the, uh, in the more or less the entire central U.S. Temperatures running about 20 degrees above our averages out there. That's significant. It's going to feel months earlier than it is. So expect more September-like weather than November as we start off the week. As we head into Tuesday, you're going to see this warm weather. It's basically going to stay ahead of our system here. Uh, so we're going to see all of this shift east before that rain and even some snow does. And uh, meanwhile, in the, in the west, where we have that system dropping in, you're going to see those cold temperatures spread farther east too. So one after another. It's going to be similar to our upper pattern that I showed you at the beginning here. But here we are Tuesday, again, looking more like September across a good chunk of the uh, Midwest um, we move this into Wednesday, that milder weather begins to wane a little bit, tries to get into the northeast, but uh, as that upper level system develops, um, the northeast is never really going to get in on that really warm weather. In fact, temperatures you're noticing now as we head into Thursday 
are really going to be much colder than average across this portion of the country here. So uh, that cold punch really comes in as we get towards the later days of the week. So Thursday and Friday across most of the eastern half of the U.S., it is going to be colder than average, especially in the southeast uh, where temps are going to fall quite a bit. Could be some 50s out there for sure. Um, and here we are Friday now, Saturday as well. You can see those temperatures are warming now in the mountains ahead of our system coming on shore. So the late week may be mild in the west, but then once we get towards uh, Saturday, Sunday, that gets kicked back into the central U.S. And uh, we'll have to watch this really cold air mass more so next week. But really is going to be a, an active week of weather. Uh, wherever you are, expect uh, conditions to be, um, again, breezy. Uh, if you're in the south central U.S., expect those storms on Monday, even into Tuesday. Um, if you're in the northeast, it's a quiet start to the week, but there may finally be some relief with rain as we get into Thursday, Friday. North central U.S., it's, it's really Tuesday, Wednesday out there. Could be some snow for you guys. A lot of wind out there, too. Maybe some high wind warnings. And in the western U.S., uh, you're coming out of this weekend with, uh, you know, some, some snow, some rain, some really active weather. But as we head into the middle of the week, you'll get a little break. And then this upcoming weekend, I want you to be aware again for that more active weather. Uh, so with that, we'll wrap things up. Of course, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Happy to answer those. Um, and we'll be back next week with another look at your weather. So stay safe out there. Stay warm as we're really beginning to slip farther into those winter months. And uh, yeah, we'll keep you updated here with the latest.